pretty rough weather when they took off. But by the time we reached Japan, it was a beautiful Saturday, right at noon. Sun was shining. There was hundreds of people on the on the beach, and they we were flying about 50 feet overhead, and they 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 were waving to us. We we're flying so low I could see that they were cheering. I'm sure they thought we were Japanese planes. Got <laughs> Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor was a shocking event to the American public. It was a sneak attack. It was a surprise attack, and. Uh, the American people wanted, in large measure, revenge. Revenge for that. And that attitude carried out throughout the war to its conclusion. And this first strike back at the Japanese home islands was like the response to a boxer getting in the first counterpunch. Confidence that we could actually do this and that there was more to come. It was such an inspirational an important moment during the Second World War, and it has remained an inspirational and important moment, uh, inspiring airmen ever since. I think it's really important in terms of history, and especially our country's history, and patriotism, and the things that have made our country great. And if not for the actions of the Doolittle Raiders, you know, not saying that, that they totally changed the course of the war, but the, the raid did ch force the Japanese to pull their forces back to Japan, and, and, and they ensuingly uh, participated in the Battle of Midway, and they lost in the Battle of Midway, and that actually turned the course of the, the war in, in favor of the U.S. So it's real important. It's real important for kids to learn about this, and it, it also, inspires kids to be patriotic and, and um, want to enlist or serve in, in the armed forces. So I, I think it's a really vital part of, of history that needs to be remembered. They were running low on fuel the night of April 18th after the raid and um, they, they encountered some pretty severe weather. It was storming pretty bad and, and there was a break in the clouds and uh, the pilot Ted Lawson looked down and he could see an open stretch of beach and he figured that he, he, he would be able to land on the beach so he, he, he took the plane around a couple of times and got ready to land, put his wheels down and suddenly the engine sputtered and stopped and they hit the wave at about 110 miles an hour, it just stopped the plane suddenly, flipped it over and threw the other four crewmen out the front of the plane, the pilot Ted Lawson, the co-pilot Dean Davenport, the navigator Charles McClure and the bombardier Robert Cl Clever. And my dad was in the back of the plane and he had had the foresight earlier that day before they went on the raid to get bundled up in really heavy clothes. And he was, he said later he was tossed around like a pea in a drum and he attributed part of his survival to being in those heavy, heavy clothes. And he was just, he was actually knocked out by the impact when he came to the plane was upside down and he was kind of disoriented, water was rushing in, but he was able to find his bearings, get out the escape hatch and then walk out on the wing and then jump down into the water and it was about waist deep. He waded to shore and his other four uh, crewmen um, were all severely injured because the pilot, co-pilot and navigator were thrown out the front of the plane and the bombardier was thrown out the, through the um, fuselage. and. Uh, and they were all, all seriously injured. It was all a series of fortunate circumstances. At any time, they could have been captured by the Japanese, and they, like, if, if they had been, they would have, at the very least, been held throughout the war in real severe conditions. In 2015, I went over to China and retraced the, the, the footsteps of my dad's crew from the time their plane crashed to where they received uh, medical treatment to the place where um, they were sheltered during the, the daily bombing raids and I had what I call my epiphany when I was standing out on the beach where the plane had crashed and I suddenly realized that if not for the Chinese um, and a lot of other fortunate circumstances I would not have been there that day on the beach because if my dad hadn't survived by subtraction or whatever I would not be here today either. I was walking up from the beach after we'd been down there to the village where my dad's crew had spent their first night after they crash landed. 
I encountered an elderly woman. She was actually propping herself up with what looked to be a cane to me. Well, she came up to me and she gave it to me, and it was actually, it's actually a piece of the ruptured duct. It's a hollow fire suppression rod from the engine. And the irony is her husband had found it on the beach as a child and held on to it for 73 years, and they were actually using it to stir their cooking fire. And then later, um, I acquired another piece of the plane. It was the uh, onboard camera cover that was actually directly below my dad's feet. And while I was there, I found out I was the first American to set foot on the island in 73 years since the Raiders had been there. Uh, apparently, the island is close to a Chinese military installation, so they don't normally allow people to go out on the island. We also went uh, a place where Crew number 15, engineer gunner on that crew, uh, a guy named Doc White, saved Ted Lawson's life by amputating his leg. But th that crew had been on the island, and the Japanese were pursuing them. And they went up to a Buddhist temple, and um, they hid underneath the temple. And we, we found the place where they hid. And apparently, a, the Buddhist priest was upstairs, the Japanese came running in, and the way they had tracked him up there, they had their boots on, and so they had left prints in, in the soil. Well, they, they were down un, underneath the, the, the main floor in, in, in the cellar, basically, in this, or a, a cave, and they could hear all this noise, and, and the Japanese beat the priest pretty severely, but he never gave up their, their location, and the Japanese finally left. So when they left that place, they took their shoes off.